The city's a lot different than when I came in 98. I am so proud of Detroit. I am overwhelmed with how the city looks. Uh, really, it's amazing. Um, I love the city. You gave me my coaching start, and uh, I get to be with these guys. You good? Yeah. You can stay with us. Okay, so I'm going to start just by saying our guys are tough as nails, mentally, physically, emotionally. We talk to each other. This is a huge win for us against a really good basketball team. And it, we, we've had some injuries, and uh, we have just picked up Xavier Silas, and thank you so much for wanting to be a part of our team power. But our team stops and starts with these guys right here. I mean, with, with Corey, with Catino, and with uh, Baby Davis. They are such professionals, and when the game's on the line, they just know how to win, and they can take information. You can change the tone of your voice, and they'll just play hard. So, guys, I, I didn't get a chance to say thank you in the locker room, so thank you. Maybe walk us through that three point shot you were. Yeah, sure, that you had that great uh, pass for me. You, you know, pass. I was just thankful that one of them went in today. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I couldn't make a shot today or, you know, uh, I had to find some energy. Um, but, um, you know, my teammates kept uh, telling me to shoot the ball, continue to say, keep playing, keep playing. And, um, and I was open, and I'm not afraid of the moment at all. So. I miss a thousand times, I'm still going to take it. <laughs> Corey, you obviously played here for a season in Detroit, so what's it like being back? Well, I still have a home here, and so um, every summer I'm back here um, in the state of Michigan. Um, a lot of my family is here, so I get a chance to see them. Um, but at the end of the day, is, you, know, you know, Detroit was good to us by allowing the Big Three to be here. Uh, being at the new arena is is unbelievable. I remember back in the Palace days, but you know this city is is going to be on the up and up. Um, it's a lot of people rooting for Detroit, rooting for Michigan, and so it's good for us to be inv involved in it. Um, it's good that Ice Cube was able to bring the big three here and to have the fans be here and, and enjoy what we're doing. And um, you know our game wasn't pretty tonight. Uh, <laughs> Miss layups, Terrible. but you know, in a game of basketball, sometimes those those ugly games, when you get a win, is you're able to refocus as a team, and so uh, it's just a credit to to everyone, um, not being afraid, like Big Baby said, on the big moment, and just taking advantage of your opportunity, having Xavier here, just to, I mean, he literally flew in today, and to to come into the offense and and be ready to go. It shows his professionalism as a player. And so, you know, we all appreciate that. And so it's just a blessing for, for all of us being able to play this game again because we're retired. And so we have a chance to, you know, showcase our abilities and, you know, hopefully we don't look too bad as old guys. Hey, Pat, sorry, Corey just mentioned it's a blessing to play the game again. What's it mean to, you, to be back in the locker room and have a camaraderie with these teammates? Well, you know, I think that's the most important thing, the camaraderie is what we miss. Um, and having these guys, uh, and being around these guys, and have, letting my son, my youngest son, see me play, and you know he loves Big Baby and Birdman and all those guys and all those characters. What about me? Yeah, he loves all these, He loves everyone. You know he's always begging to come every weekend. You know, so I mean for me it's just, <clears throat> just to be around my peers, Hall of Famers. You know, I mean it's just it's just a blessing, and uh, hopefully God continue to bless us. Because, you know, what differences do you see with how, when you played, I'm from Houston, I watched you growing up on the Rockets, by the way. You're not supposed to say it like that. I know, I, was, I had to get it out there. My family, we love you, we watched Thank you all the time so growing up. So, what would you think, you know, being on the Rockets, you, Steve Francis, that style of play is obviously not how it is now when these guys played in the new era. So, what do you think are the differences between the era when you played and now? Well, well the first thing is my speed. Right, it's not there no more, so <laughs> that's why those guys can stay with me. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it was a little more physical uh, back when uh, Corey and I were playing in the early tw uh, 2000s. And then now it's a little more, uh, you know, you dance a lot on the perimeter and it's more guard oriented. It's, you know, you don't have a whole bunch of seven-footers. And we played, it was seven-footers on every team, and those seven-footers were all-stars. 
So uh, you can't just go in there and make layups. You have to go in and dunk the ball if you're going to go in. And you might get your rib broken. So, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's just, again, like, you know, it's just fun to be out here, you know. Cool. Yeah. What do you think is the possibility of having uh, ex-WNBA players uh, joining this league? Well, I think right off the top of my head, I would say that there's a WNBA and there's Europe. And I don't know that I would ask a WNBA player to come play in the big three. I mean, these guys are big, strong, physical. It's no joke. Um, they, they women will have an opportunity to do things post-career. But to take a retired WNBA player and put them in a situation like this, th these guys are serious athletes. You should see how they take care of their bodies during the week. Uh, it's like, I think like Corey said, um, it's a tribute to, you know, Xavier that he could get off a plane today. We <coughs> signed him, when, when did you pick him, Tuesday? A couple of days ago. Sit down with me at the, you know, at the lobby, go through our play and our play set, and then step in. <coughs> These guys are big and strong. I know. I played against guys. I played against women. I played against guys. It it would be hard. And I just don't think that that would be a recipe for success. I love everything about uh, the big three. And the guys that we have on power, it, it's unbelievable. You know, they use the word blessed a lot. We are blessed because we, we started off slow today. We didn't start off with our natural energy the way we have. But we can look each other with respect and hold each other accountable and say, you got to play harder. <coughs> you have to do this. You need to do this. And they might get mad, but not, they're not mad at me. They're not mad at They just want to lift the level of their game. Baby did that. Katino did that. Corey is having uh, an MVP season, and then we get a player, you know, like Xavier Silas, who was the first player to be called up to the NBA when he played with the Celtics uh, last year. So we have, and, and what about Birdman? Birdman comes in, does does his job. We're a team here, and the, you want to be talking to them, not me, actually. Oh, well, my question is, I don't say who, but somebody wanted to stop the referee today. Do you feel the referee is not taking the game as serious, or is he just ignorant? Or? No, no, no. I'm gonna stop you there. I think, uh, first of all, I think that we gotta understand that the officials make mistakes, and they're not robots. Where it has to be a 100% accuracy. Um, in this game of basketball, we make mistakes all the time, and the official makes mistakes as well. Um, at the end of the day, is we have to uphold our professionalism as as players, and you know things happen in the game where we get upset, and it's you have to understand it. It's because of the competitive nature of every single person on the floor, right? Everyone wants to win, everyone wants to compete, and when officials miss calls, you know players are really upset. But then there's times where we make mistakes, and the coaches is yelling at us as well. So again, I'm not going to you know throw the officials under the bus. Um, but I would say the officials need to be better, and the players need to be better. You know, it's 50-50. Glad he took that mic from me. Yeah, I know. That's what, that's what I mean. <laughs> You know, but, but that's, that's what we have to improve. And it's the same thing that goes on in the NBA world. You know, the respect of the officials is not there. So, again, it takes, it takes more professionalism from all the players um, and also the professionalism of the officials to really study game film and, and make sure they're as accurate as possible uh, to, to, to let the fans see a great product. The last question. Oh, okay. The question I would have, with the community being so involved this time, Ice Cube went all over the city, uh, the players uh, cooked for the homeless. Uh, Ricky, they Davis showed, Ricky Davis. Ricky Davis. Davis yeah. Yeah. Every city uh, some everything. I just want to say thank to all y'all, because it wasn't just a game today. They really, since almost uh, Wednesday, have been in the community doing things individually. And so, do you think this league will continue? Well, I know you're going to continue to do stuff like that. But is that impact you hope would rub off to the other folk? 
No, for sure. I mean, you know, listen, um, you know, Nancy, uh, Dr. J, um, you know, Rick Berry, those, they, they paved the way for us, you know, and, um, you know, we played in the league. We had, uh, I had Cat's Corner. Corey had his thing when he was the Corey's baby. All of us had our little thing that we were donating and doing our certain charity works. Um, and I think it just carries over, right? We have children. We want, you know, I love when babies, uh, we're FaceTime baby and, and Miles smiles, my son Miles. So, you know, so if, if we could continue to do those type of things in every single city, make these little kids smile. You know, the young three is picking up with, uh, you know, junkyard dog, uh, you know, I mean, it's just, you know, over 200 some kids came here in Detroit. So, you know, uh, Ricky Davis Foundation feeds to the homeless and every city goes to, that's phenomenal. Uh, I mean, you know, the more creative we can get, the better we'll be as a big three. And uh, Coach Nancy said something, I think, in our first game. It's just, we can, if we can show everybody that uh, just because we look different, that we're all the same, we can love each other. I think it, it'll kind of send that, that positive message uh, around the uh, country and hopefully the world. Last question in the back. Um, Coach, it's kind of a quick two-parter. What is the process for selecting your um, team, or your team? And then as a team, how hard is it to get that synergy as a team before getting out on the floor? Well, first, just to walk you through the process, Corey McGetty is our captain. Uh, Katina <coughs> Mobley is uh, a co-captain with Big Baby Davis. When we had an injury, it's Corey's responsibility, and he's kind enough. He doesn't have to, but he's kind enough to include us all <coughs> and ask our opinions <coughs> on players and who we think would fit this team. Uh, we kick it around. We don't always agree. You know, we agree, disagree, but we're always aligned at the end of the day because this is a player's league, and they have to feel comfortable with their teammates. And I will coach whoever, you know, Corey and Catino and, and Baby, you know, give us. Um, it's a really, it's, it's just a really cool system where the players have impact and input in, in what they want. And the second part of your question was? Was how easy is it for you to gain a synergy as a team in selecting? Uh, I will say this. We, uh, a, a lot of our players on our team are faith-based. <laughs> And we trust each other, and we believe in each other, <coughs> and we're humbled to be able to be on a team together. And we talk about it, we pray about it, and we go out and we work together. Trust me, Corey could put up 30 a night. Catino could put up 30 a night. Big Baby could put up 30 a night. But they're looking for the next best play to make our team, you know, three and one. So they have an understanding of how to win. We've got two players on our team that has championship ranks. We've got players who have won championships. I mean, uh, you know, Birdman, 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 Birdman. Big Baby Dave. They're, they're winners. You know, these guys had incredible careers. I mean, Xavier doesn't have to be with us. He could have said no. He could have said, you know, I'm going back to the NBA. He had a say in what happened also. So we, we're a very confident group, but humility is confidence. Arrogance is not confidence. And, and we trust each other. And I'm the lucky, you know, I'm the luckiest woman in basketball to be in the locker room with these guys. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.